Hello and welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner. We're covering Sergey Lane's basic mathematics. And this is section 13.4, the exponential function. So we have already discussed what happens when you take some number. It could be a real number. It could be irrational, irrational, doesn't matter. And we raise that to the power of m over n, where m and n are integers, right? So we know how to take the exponent of rationals. The problem is, is that we... Uh, haven't really explained what happens when we take a to some real number that could be irrational. We haven't really gone down that road. Today we're going to go down that road. We're going to see what happens. Okay. So for the first uh, thing we're going to do, we're going to consider when a is greater than zero. So we're considering right now a is greater than zero. Okay. And we know that when, um, as long as n does not equal zero, right? We can go back to chapter three, section three, and review what happens when we take exponents of, of fractions and how we get there, right? So let's consider the formula, the, the function that takes x and maps it to a to the x power for all real numbers, okay? Let's consider what happens. We're gonna have some rules. So first, we're gonna have exp1, exp1. Exp1 says that when we take a and we add two numbers together that's the same as a to the x times a to the y okay and if we have two with the same base but different uh with the same base and the exponents we just add the exponents to the base and we get the same answer so we can go backwards and forwards for this one rule exp2 states that for all numbers x and y we have a to the x raised to the y power is the same as a to the x y Okay, so multiplying the exponents is the same as taking the inside, a to the x, y times, okay? And then we have rule exp3 that says if a and b are positive, then a, b to the zth power is equal to a to the z, b to the z. Okay, this one's different than exp1 because exp1 we have the same base. In this case, we have different bases, right? And then finally, we have exp4. And x4 says that when a is greater than 1, and if x is less than y, then a to the x is also less than a to the y. Okay? All right? Let's consider some additional conclusions. One is that a to the 0 is equal to 1. How do we know this? Well, if we had a to the x times a to the minus x, that's going to be the same as a to the zero. What does a to the minus x mean? Oh yes, a to the x is equal to a to the zero, which means a to the x minus x, right? And the only way this can be true is if a to the x, a to the minus x is the multiplicative inverse of a to the x, so therefore a to the minus x must be equal to one minus one to the a to the x power, right? Because it's a multiplicative inverse, so that's equal to one, okay? The values of the exponential function are always positive. If x is greater than zero, x is greater than zero, and a is greater than one, then a to the x must be greater than one. Okay, because a to the zero equals one, and the rule exp4 and exp4 told us that if x is less than y, then a to the x must be less than a to the y if a is greater than one. Okay, so that means that if we have any number bigger than zero, then it must be bigger than one. The exponent must be bigger than one. Okay, what if we allowed so we have zero is less than a is less than one. So we have a is positive, but it's less than one, okay? How would exp4 change? Okay, is it still true that a to the x is less than a to the y if x is less than y? Okay, you'll have to do some experiments for yourself to see how that works, okay? Anyway, now we can actually graph the function for the exponent. Let's actually do this, okay? And this is how it's gonna work. So we're gonna take, let's draw our coordinate axes, okay? So we're gonna be positive here. I did not get this exactly where I wanted it to, so there we go. Okay, so at zero, this is where zero is. Let's mark the ticks every other cell here. Okay, so we're gonna say a is equal to two. So f of x is equal two to the x, okay? So at, one more time, let's mark these off. 
I didn't draw the vertical coordinate quite right. It'll still work though. At zero, the value is one, right? Because a to the zero is one. At one, the value is two, because two to the one is two. At two, well, that's two squared, so that's four. So we go one, two, three, four. At three, that's gonna be eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay? And at four, it's gonna be 16, it's gonna be off the charts, okay? At negative one, that's gonna be one half, so it's gonna go down here. At negative two, one quarter, negative three, one eighth, then one sixteenth, and it's gonna it's going to approach this, but not quite reach it. Okay, so the graph is going to fairly rapidly go like this. And the rule that we have is if we can, if we can take any of the real values. So if we had like let's say pi, so the pi is three point one four. That's like right there, right? So when we go to draw pi, we know that it's bigger than three point one. It's smaller than three point one, three point two. And so we know that the two to the power of pi is going to be between those two numbers. And so this is how we can graph this function. We can fill it in because we know because of exp4 that if the exponents are larger, then the, um, the number must also increase. Okay, let's take an example. Let's take an, oh, another interesting thing about this graph is that if, if for each step it doubles, right? Because the base is two, right? So we go from one half to one here. We go from one quarter or one eighth to one quarter and so on and so forth. Okay, let's consider an example. The population of a city doubles every year. And at time t equals zero, it is equal to 100 persons. So population doubles. Every year. At t equals zero, there's 100 people. Okay, we can express the population in the form p of t is equal to 100 times 2 to the t. Okay, and because it's doubling every year, we know that when this is an integer, this will work, right? So at t equals 0, the population of t is going to be 2 to the 0, which is 1. It's just going to be 100. Okay, um, let's draw a graph of what happens to the population over time. Okay, so we have, let's say, 100 here. Okay, then at t equals one, it's gonna double. It's gonna become 200, right? At t equals two, it's gonna be 400, 300, 400, and so on. And it's gonna rapidly increase exponentially. Okay, so that's how that population is gonna grow. All right, let's consider another example. In this example, we are going to calculate the function f of t is equal to some constant c, capital C, times some base a raised to the power of 5t, right? So at t equals 0, f of 0 is going to be just c, because 5 times 0 is 0, a to the 0 is 1, right? Okay. And then c is, okay. So. You can think of this as population growth. In this case, it's going to be fairly rapid population growth because of the factor of five, right? So uh, it also depends on the base there. These two numbers, this number here and that number there, represent um, the larger they are, the faster this thing is going to grow. That's thanks to rule exp4, okay? Another example. In this other example, Certain substances disintegrate at a rate proportional to the amount of substance present. If f denotes this amount, then it is known that f as a function of time is given by the formula f of t is equal to c a to the kt. Okay? In this case, k is negative. So k is less than zero because we're reducing the amount. An example of this would, let's say we had f of t is equal to 3 times a to the minus 2t, okay? And if a equals 2, so if we had 3 to the times 2 to the minus 2t, okay, then at t equals 0, we would just get f of t would be, well, that just 2 to the 0 is just 1, so we get 3. At t equals 1, we're going to get 2 to the minus 2, so that's 1 quarter, so it's 3 quarters. At t equals 2, that's 2 to the negative 4, which is going to be 16. Right, so that's three sixteenths. 
you can see it fairly rapidly decreases over time. All right, and after four years, we're gonna get four times two is eight, two to the minus eight is one, 256. So we're gonna get three over 256, okay? So it's going to fairly rapidly disintegrate. Now I'm gonna talk about the exercises here. Um, they are not very difficult. The sketching the graph, be sure to draw a table, I'll go through the points one at a time. That's not terribly difficult. Um, I thought that the exercises had actually the natural law, natural exponent e, but that's gonna actually be in the next section. We're gonna talk about where e comes from. Not really we're gonna define it, but we're gonna say that there is a natural base that we can use for things. And um, there is not much else to go over. You shouldn't need to use a calculator for number eight, um, unless you don't know your powers of two, in which case you probably do wanna use a calculator. Uh, number seven, Note that if you have f of t is equal to 4 times 16 raised to the power of t, well, what's 16? That's just 2 to the 4, right? So this is the same as 4 times 2 to the 4t. Okay, so you can do things like that as well uh, if that helps you solve the problems quicker. All right? Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this section. If you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments below, and I'll catch you next time. Take care, and bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video on Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. You can find the series on the left, and on the right you can click to support my channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.